congregation. Happy Easter. Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. How wonderful to be here to celebrate Easter with you. My first Easter here at St. Andrew's Church, and it is a blessing to be here. Let me tell you. Uh, we have a few announcements. The first announcement I'm going to call upon Charles Wilson to make for us. Lots of little jobs on uh, around the church for, for many years, uh, like Jim does now. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he was on the board for many years, and he and his wife have been saying for long time members of the church. Uh, his service will be uh, Wednesday, a viewing at nine o'clock, and his service at uh, eleven o'clock. So uh, keep them in mind and his family. At Sutton's funeral. Thank you, Charles. We will, we will keep the family in our prayers and thoughts. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, our audio technical team is going to meet this Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. And session, we will meet uh, the following Wednesday, April the 10th at 7 p.m. Now, next Sunday will be another first for me. I understand it's your tradition to do something I've never heard of. Uh, it is called Bright Sunday. And so I will bring my camera and I am going to take a picture of you on Bright Sunday, how it looks to me. So I think this will be exciting. So I understand uh, you just wear your most bright, outlandish costume, that you outfit that you have. Uh, it might be one you keep in the closet that you don't wear very, very often. And I know there are a few people with reputations for, for Bright Sunday and some of, <laughs> some of their outfits. So I am really looking forward, uh, forward to that. So that's next Sunday. We will carry on with that Bright Sunday tradition. 
As you've come through the doors, uh, John has been passing you a flower, and I will explain what we're going to do with the flower when we come to that point in our service. And we are also celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion together on Resurrection morning. And that is a blessing for us. And as you leave the sanctuary, if you can bring your cup with you, that would be right, uh, wonderful. So we'll just ask you to do that. So let us just take a moment to take a deep breath and relax and enter into the spirit of Easter Sunday. And so we gladly and with great joy light the Christ candle. Jesus Christ, our ever-present light of the world. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to our call to worship. O oh, day of resurrection, we lift our hearts with joy. Christ has led us from death to life. Hallelujah. O oh, day of resurrection, we will worship you with hope. Christ has led us from birth to heaven. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Well, let's follow the choir and stand with them and sing a great hallelujah. Hymn number 243, Jesus Christ is risen today, and we're singing verses 1 to 3. Well, let's join in a prayer of adoration, after which we will raise our voices together with our confession to our Father. God of resurrecting power, we lift our hearts with joy when we see the tomb is empty. God of resurrecting hope, you fill us with excitement when we hear that Christ is risen. God of resurrecting love, 
You embrace us with courage when we trust in the power of new life, the new life that you promise in the risen Christ. Lord, we offer you all glory, honor, and praise with hearts overflowing in Jesus' name. And now, O oh Lord, we lift up together our prayer of confession, saying together, God of resurrecting joy, we confess it is not easy to sustain Easter hope. We let discouragement, fear, and frustration settle in, and we let anger and anxiety turn our hearts away from you. Resentment and disappointment cling to us, and we forget your great mercy and love. Forgive us. Restore within us the joy and hope you promise us in Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Well, my friends, we are here this morning because we have an assurance of pardon. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and set free for new life by God's resurrecting grace. Amen. This morning, for our Children of God time, I would like to uh, invite you, as we sing our hymn this morning, to take your time and come forward with your flower. The flower is for something that is in your heart. It could be a prayer. That flower could be for someone who's not here with you today. Someone that is having new life, has been received by God. So we will sing our hymn. It's a joyous hymn. And I'll invite maybe just to make everything comfortable row by row. You can come forward with your flower. And we're going to place that prayer, the need of someone we love, the need of someone that, uh, that could not be here today, or someone that we no longer have with us in this existence. So as you come forward, you, there are two vases here. We can place our flower at the foot of the cross, and we'll just continue to sing the hymn until we've all completed. So we might repeat it more than one time. And uh, it's a joyous hymn. And I know our hearts are filled with joy at Easter time. But always during celebration times, we remember others who are not celebrating with us. And so our flowers can be brought forward and we can place those thoughts and prayers at the foot of the cross. So children of God, we're going to begin singing our song. Uh, and as we do so, choir, you can just continue leading the music because Leora is going to come and take your flowers from you. So maybe just remain seated and uh, Leora will collect our flowers for the choir. So let's start singing. And I guess I'll invite our elders first. So Matt, if you can um, begin our hymn. Thank you. 
And now we've offered our thoughts and prayers at the foot of the cross. It's that time in our service where we have the opportunity to give back to God a portion of what God gives to us. Easter Day celebrates God's most precious gift to us in Jesus Christ dying and his rising. As we present our gifts this morning, may our generosity reflect God's goodness to us and the hope we have in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Our offering will now be received. Let us pray together. God of resurrecting grace, we offer our gifts with grateful hearts, recognizing how much you have given us in Christ and what that gift has cost. Empower these gifts to spread the hope and joy we feel today in the world you love. In the name of your greatest gift, Jesus Christ, amen. You may be seated. And now let us pray for understanding as we hear psalms and as we hear Old Testament and New Testament readings this morning. So let us pray. Spirit of resurrecting truth, roll away any assumptions that block our understanding of the Easter story. Open our minds and hearts to receive the good news that Christ is risen indeed. Change our lives with this gift. Alleluia. And I'll ask Leora Sharman to join me at the podium as we share this morning's readings. Can I pass you that for a moment? Thank you. Before we begin, our responsive psalm this morning is a little different. It is not from the Old Testament. It is actually from the heart. And this winter, on sort of one of those gloomy days when you're just not having a lot of, you're just not all that inspired feeling, uh, Tina and Leora came in and uh, they said, we have something for you. And so whenever we hear those words, something for us, we, we perk up right away. And so I opened a package, and you, you won't be able to see all the details, so I, uh, Terrence took a picture for me. Uh, and Leora 
made this piece of art for me. And it's made from like broken pieces of glass. And there's a sunshine here that was from Tina's garden, I believe. And so there's a little uh, flower here. And it is so beautiful. And as soon as I saw it, I thought of Easter. Because when I looked at the broken glass, it reminded me that God can shine through us, no matter how broken we are, no matter how shattered our lives might be, God can still shine light through us, and God can put together the broken pieces so very wonderfully for us. So thank you. I wanted to honor this gift. I received so many lovely gifts, but this one just really spoke to me, and I think it will uh, speak to you as well. Today, uh, when I leave the sanctuary, I will bring the, the picture outside with me and uh, you can have a closer look. So, Leora, thank you. It's also on the front of your bulletin. <laughs> so, uh, Kathleen, my clerk of session, thank you. So, uh, the psalm that Leora and I are going to read together responsively, uh, you can receive this morning. We receive so many wonderful gifts, and this is something um, that is from the heart. So, hear this psalm. Lord, just yesterday I was weeping, broken in spirit and kneeling at the foot of your cross. I cried out to you. Lord, why have you left me here, alone and forsaken in the quickening shadows of this world? Did you not promise that you would be my deliverer and my savior? Lord, just yesterday, I was lost in the darkness of a silence I have never known before. My soul longed to hear your voice calling my name again. And somehow, in the stillness of that silence, I sensed Soft as a petal on the wind, I sensed your voice, the only voice that could fill the void in my soul. You called me by my name. Through the valley of the shadow of death, you have broken free and released me from the bondage of death. And your pierced hands reach out to me, offering to hold my hand along the path you have set before me. You gather together the broken fragments of my spirit, my life, and you fashion them into something beautiful. Lord, calm my fears, strengthen my faith. May I always hear you calling so that you, the risen Christ, can shine through these shattered pieces. This is a reading from Isaiah 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all people, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord from whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in this salvation. This ends the reading from the Old Testament. In our gospel reading this morning from John 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the, one, the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. 
he saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Christ had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and to say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Thanks be to God for this holy word. Amen. Matt is now going to lead the choir in singing, We Shall Rise.
Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> I invite you to pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you this day, our rock and our redeemer. Well, that narrative I read of the empty tomb is one we are most familiar with. And it's not just a biblical passage for us to remember today and just reflect upon only on Easter morning. It is the cornerstone of our faith. And the empty tomb challenges us to look beyond the immediate reality of suffering and death we see in this world. It's inviting us to embrace a vision of life that is rooted in the promise of resurrection, a life where love triumphs over hate, peace overcomes conflict, and life emerges triumphant from the clutches of death. This invitation to us is one that we don't always accept easily. We're being invited to see our own suffering and our losses as part of the journey to new life. Just like Mary Magdalene on Good Friday, we too found ourselves weeping outside the tomb, enveloped in darkness and despair. Yet the resurrection tells us it is precisely in those moments that the risen Christ calls us by name and can turn our mourning into joy and our despair into hope. As you can imagine, I meet many people who don't listen for Christ calling them by name. And when they do, or if they think they hear, they don't recognize, they don't respond to God's call. And perhaps it's because many people today are just too advanced. They just seem not to be able to contend with the idea that the tomb was empty. They attempt to use propositional arguments, which are invaluable for scientific inquiry and for technological advancement but they use the same method to seek to prove that which is not measurable by these means. We cannot reduce the majesty and mystery of a creator God, the spiritual, the transcendent, to a series of propositional arguments. We seem to know God best, we sense him, we hear him, most often through our lived experiences, things that cannot be measured the same way. <clears throat> it's those times when we find it difficult to put our thoughts and emotions into words that are adequate to describe what we are thinking and sensing and feeling. The birth of a child. The love and support that we feel from our partners and friends, especially when we don't feel we deserve it. The moments we are with someone as they take their last breaths. The times that we experience grace. Can be listening to a symphony, becoming mesmerized by a piece of art. Those unexpected times when maybe we're moved to tears as we listen to the choir's anthem, when the sun is shining through a stained glass window on their faces during a quiet Maundy Thursday evening. Experiencing the living, resurrected Christ is quite a different kind of knowing. It engages the whole of our being, and it opens us to the mystery and the transcendence. This morning, I selected this painting. It's by uh, Friar Angelico, and it's de his depiction of Mary encountering Jesus at the tomb. And I chose it because, in part, I was intrigued by its history, its use. It wasn't really painted um, for something to be displayed 
for everyone to see. This was actually painted on the wall of one of the, they call them cells, the private cells, of one of the, the, for the friars that lived there. And the friars would use this as a tool to meditate on Christ's life, to remind them of their duty to spread the gospel and live out their lives mirroring, mirror, mirroring reflecting that of Christ's. I don't think you can see all of the details, especially you, the choir. Uh, a commentary by this work by Devin Abbs says, Mary is the first to bring the message to the world. And here, this artist is capturing that miraculous transformation of the world on the morning of Christ's resurrection. This scene seems to unfold at dawn. We see a vibrant walled garden and it's bursting with life. And then just scattered between the grasses and shrubs, they have tiny red flowers, and they're painted in the same color as the visible wounds that are on Christ's hands and feet, just reminding us of the sacrifice that Christ has made, and that this sacrifice makes all things new. Mary is caught up in this transformation. She has her back to the tomb, and she turns from the shadow of sin towards a resurrection life. You can't see this, but on her face are painted tears from weeping as she turns towards her Savior. And Christ, well, he is depicted as sort of an in-between state, hovering lightly over the ground. He already seems to be ascending. Christ's appearance to Mary on the morning of the resurrection heralds the transformation of humanity's relationship to God. Mary, we, have to let go of earthly notions, an earthly Christ, so that he may ascend to heaven, ascend to the Father in glory. I'm going to share with you a quote. My friend and contemporary, Reverend David Cull, who, like me, this morning, he's preaching his first Easter Sunday, and it's at Bethel Presbyterian Church in Sydney, Nova Scotia, which incidentally is the home church of Reverend Shirley Murdoch. Yeah. So I will share this quote that he, he sent me. Jesus' resurrection is about God loving us so much that he is willing to go to any length to find us in all the wrong places. In Jesus' resurrection, God finds us when we are down and out, when we are at the end of our rope, when we have lost hope. God rolls back the stones that bind and confine us. Jesus opened up a new relationship for us through his death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead. No longer do we have to go to a high priest to seek atonement for sin. Jesus became the final sacrifice for our sins. He has given us free access to God the Father, to whom we can come in times of need. End of quote. <coughs> well, from John's Gospel this morning, we read that at first Mary didn't even recognize Jesus. It was only when he called her by name that her eyes were opened. Later in John, we hear, I know my own, and my own know me. So it's not surprising that Mary recognizes the voice of the risen Christ. And that is the same voice that calls you here this morning. Once Mary recognized Jesus, she's given a mission. Go and tell the disciples you've seen the Lord. Encounters with a risen Christ have a transformational effect, and it compels one to action, compels us to action. Our faith is not meant to be a private affair, but something that's dynamic and living, a living reality that motivates us to share the good news of Jesus' resurrection with others. We're called to be witnesses of hope and resurrection in a world that is often marked by cynicism and despair, marked by fear and uncertainty, a world where Technology fails, and where bridges can fall, where wars and plagues persist. 
Well, in closing, what does it mean to live in the light of resurrection? It means being people of hope, those who are actively working towards bringing about the kingdom of God here and now, caring for the poor, seeking justice, loving our neighbors, and stewarding our beautiful creation. You see, the hope found in Jesus' resurrection is not an ancient passage to be celebrated only by us here in the church. It is a much-needed beacon of hope, an assurance to a world lost in chaos, the assurance that love is stronger than hate, life is stronger than death, and life, light, will always overcome darkness. As followers of Christ, we're invited to live out this resurrection life embodying hope and renewal that we experience through our encounter with our risen Lord. The voice that called Mary at the empty tomb calls you this day as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you now to stand as we read together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I invite you to this table this morning. It is not a table of the Presbyterian Church. It's the table of Jesus Christ. And we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. Whenever we gather at this table, we tell the story of how the meal began. We remember how Jesus shared bread and wine with his friends the night before he died. Today, we also remember that first Easter when Jesus appeared to his friends walking along the road to Emmaus. But they were too sad and tired to recognize him, so he came to the table with them. He took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. So as we break this bread and share this cup in the name of our risen Lord, May our eyes be open to recognize Jesus' presence with us here. And as Jesus offered thanks for the gift of the earth, let us also bless God for what we are about to receive. We are now going to sing together our communion hymn, One Bread, One Body, and we will sing verse 1 and 2.
join together in the great prayer, the prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give all our thanks and grace. On this joyful Easter day, with hearts lifted high, we offer gratitude and praise to you, O God. For we have seen your grace and power rolling away the stone of sorrow and despair, bursting from the land in the gift of new life. And so we join our voices with creation high and low, with all the saints before us and beside us, in heaven and on earth, to raise the song of your unending grace and greatness. And we say, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Receive our praise and joy this day, O Lord. Your resurrection promises new possibilities for us and for our weary world. Even when we falter in discouragement or doubt, even if we hesitate at the news that your great love has come back to embrace us, you do not abandon us. You open our arms wide and you invite us back to your side. At this table, you offer not just bread and wine, but your very self so that we may be filled and forgiven, healed and blessed once more. Great and gracious God, such gifts touch our deepest needs, and so we proclaim our faith and our hope as we say, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Spirit of life rising in us and around us, bless us, and this bread and this wine. May they become for us Christ's body and life blood, offering new life and the power to make us whole. As the bread and wine become part of us, make us part of you, Lord Jesus. Dare us to live for justice and joy, trusting that all things will work together for good through the power of the love that raised you from the dead. And love we share in your name as we pray together your words. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Take this bread. This is my body, broken for you. And he took the cup and he said, Drink this in remembrance of me.
Taste and see that the Lord is good, body of Christ given for you. Now we partake in the joy of heaven.
clean. Blood of Christ shed for you. Taste and see that the Lord is good, the blood of Christ shed for you. Pray with me. Christ be with us, Christ within us, Christ behind us, Christ before us, Christ beside us, Christ to win us, Christ to comfort and restore us, Christ beneath us, Christ above us, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger. Christ in hearts of all that love us, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger, wherever we go in your name. Amen. Let's join together singing the last two verses of One Bread, One Body. going to offer the prayers of the people, and I will just ask that you hold those things most close in your heart that need God's care this morning as we end our service in prayer. God of our new beginnings, break into your church with your resurrecting power, where congregations are challenged to rethink outreach in changing times. Inspire us with new approaches. Renew our commitment for this church's ministry, St. Andrew's Church this day. God of new possibilities, break into our relationships with resurrecting power. 
where they are vibrant and life-giving, nurture and sustain them, and where there are memories of hurt or misunderstandings, refresh them with forgiveness and reconciliation. God of new opportunities, break into the grievance of your world with resurrecting power. Stir the minds and hearts of leaders. Be with those this day who are plagued by war, plagued by disasters. Father, in this moment of silence, on this resurrection Easter morning, we offer you the prayers of our hearts and the needs of our lives. Through you, resurrected Jesus Christ, we know that you can pick up the shattered fragments of our lives, mend them together, and create new life. May it be so day by day. Amen. And now our final hymn. We'll sing together, Thine Be the Glory. And we're going to stand for this hymn, Thine Be the Glory. your hearts and the disciples hope at the news Jesus has risen to encourage you. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you this day and evermore. Amen. Amen.